Hello, my name is Jason Fullerton, and I am a Customer Technical Support Engineer for Alpha Assembly Solutions. Today, we are going to be learning how to measure the acid number of a liquid soldering flux using Alpha's titration kit number three. Before we begin, I want to explain the proper personal protective equipment, or PPE, necessary for handling these materials. Before handling any chemicals, always refer to the safety data sheet and follow its recommendations. Today, we're going to measure the acid number of SLS65C liquid soldering flux. The safety data sheet recommends using eye protection and skin protection, so we will be wearing goggles and gloves for this procedure. In addition, there are chemicals in the titration kit that recommend protective clothing, so we will also be wearing a lab coat while we perform this procedure. Now that we have the proper PPE, let's review the contents of Alpha's titration kit number three. First, we have the Hatch Digital Titrator. We will set this up during step four. Next, we have a 125 milliliter Erlenmeyer flask. The kit also includes a 10 milliliter graduated cylinder, a container of phenophthalein indicator solution, and a container of 8.0 normal sodium hydroxide cartridge. Finally, there are four droppers included with the kit. You will also need the nomogram for the flux under test. This is the nomogram for SLS65C. If you are testing a different flux, you should request the proper nomogram from Alpha Assembly Solutions. In addition, you will need test solvent. Deionized water can be used for rosin-free fluxes. Alpha K75I or other high purity isopropanol can be used for rosin-based fluxes. Or a 75% isopropanol, 25% deionized water solution can be used for all fluxes. In our first step, we're going to transfer five milliliters of flux to be tested into a clean, dry, 125 milliliter Erlenmeyer flask. The volume of this test sample is critical to ensure accurate measurement results. The 10 milliliter graduated cylinder included with the kit can be used. However, a five milliliter pipette or syringe is strongly recommended. Today, we will be using a precision five milliliter pipette to acquire the test sample. Next, we need to add solvent to the test solution. Add approximately 50 milliliters of the appropriate test solvents. Today, we are using a 75% isopropanol, 25% deionized water solution. The volume of this solution is not critical, and any variation will not affect measurement accuracy. In the next step, we add two to four drops of phenothalin solution to the Erlenmeyer flask and swirl. For our next step, we install the 8.0 normal sodium hydroxide cartridge into the hatch titrator and prepare the titrator as follows. First, we install a clean delivery tube into the sodium hydroxide cartridge. Next, we install the cartridge on the hatch titrator by sliding on and turning into place. Next, we prime the delivery tube to expel air by turning the delivery knob until a few drops of solution emerge. Finally, we reset the counter by turning the reset knob and clean the delivery tube with a clean wipe or with clean test solvent. After zeroing the reading, immerse the delivery tube into the solution. Titrate by turning the delivery knob to dispense a measured amount of sodium hydroxide. Keep turning the knob and swirling the sample until the solution turns pink in color for at least one minute. Once we obtain the titration number, we can now calculate the acid number of the flux. The acid number in milligrams of potassium hydroxide per gram equals the titration number times the F factor. The F factor is a constant that can be found on the nomogram for your flux. For SLS65C, F equals 0.14. Our titration number of 147 times our F factor of 0.14 results in an acid number of 20.58 milligrams of potassium hydroxide per gram. Once the acid number has been determined, you can calculate the amount of thinner to be added, if necessary, to bring the flux acid number down to the necessary value using the equation T equals V times EPT. First, we will calculate the volume of solvent to add. Determine the volume of flux to be thinned, this is V. 
locate the acid number on the bottom of the nomogram, follow up from the acid number until you reach the line on the nomogram, and then follow left from the line to identify the percent EPT value, then divide by 100 to convert to EPT. Multiply V times EPT. This is the volume of solvent to add T in the same units as the flux volume. You may need to convert the volume units. In our example, we are measuring the acid number in one gallon of flux, so the value for T is in gallons. To convert to fluid ounces, you would multiply T by 128. To convert to liters, you would multiply T by 3.7854. And to convert to milliliters, you would multiply T by 3,785.4. And now you know how to use alpha titration kit number three to measure the acid number of a liquid flux. Thanks for joining me today. Good luck and happy titrating.